All right, what about the single ladies? All the single, coming up, we have a single ladies. We got a review of um, Anton Daniels and Yada Awakening, and then we'll get to the Passport Bros, but I got to get through this. Uh, we do have the results here, what the single women are talking about. All the single ladies, uh, put your hands up. Remember I did that show on Beyonce lyrics? Remember I did that show on Beyonce lyrics, and I read the single lady lyrics? Quite, quite funny. I'm going to have to put out a video on it. I might, I might have put it out already. What's going on with single women in America? Shout out to the married women and the women following the plan of God, man, and woman. That is the natural order. Congratulations for you. Shout out to the people getting lucky. And shout out to the men that are getting their turn with their women. All right. I, I listen. You, you guys can make it work for a period of time. Uh, but it says right here how it feels being single in 2023. And I think this woman is uh, fake crying, but let's hear it. Whether generation in history has ever had to swipe through dating apps and look at pictures of men on the internet that are from five years ago and then meet them out at stupid restaurants and pretend to like the stupid drinks they order just for them to three days later say that this is not going to work out. Then why did we go on the date, Jason? Why? I'm sick of seeing everybody my age get engaged and tell me just get back out there where we're in hell no oh man there ain't no tears but uh i think she's acting there but yeah she's feeling a certain way let's go to this young lady right here uh or old woman <laughs> and by the way if you miss my uh video my my commentary on um carrie hilson Old women are gone. They, they, they finished. All right, here we go right here. This woman is going to say something. When people ask me what do I want to do with my life, I typically make some shit up on the spot because the real answer is I want to be a fucking housewife. I don't imagine myself working. I want to be fucking domesticated. I'm a domestic bitch. Only thing I want to do is work out all day, cook, clean, nest, and encourage a motherfucker. To just make both of our lives better. Like, that is, that's what the fuck I'm supposed to be doing. That's my dream job. But until then... I'll be paying these bills half-ass. I'm more than capable of taking care of myself, but why? When somebody else can help me. Independence and strength are a facade that I choose not to believe. I need a partner, especially when it comes to pumping gas and taking care of my car. I fucking refuse, bitch. Well, uh, again, this is another Kosher Dama special. I told you they were going to do this, and I said when the economy kicks their ass, remember, some of you guys have just found me. You guys don't understand. I said they were going to do this before they did it. I said the By the way, I, I said it before... People started getting popular in this space. I said, when the economy starts kicking their ass, they're going to switch it up. There goes feminism right on the belly up, right? Femi femi All it takes is it what I call it, five things that need to be present. And by the way, these five things that I said need to be present were almost unthought of when I came up with it. Who remembers them? I said, the only thing that will change the bullshit in the narrative are five things. And I said this before 2020. When I said it, people were like, what? And they were like, you're doom and gloom. I said, World War III, an ec economic collapse of epic proportion, and we're in one, whether they call it one or not. I said a plague. That was before COVID. A plague. I said a plague can fix this shit. COVID showed up a year later. I said a religious awakening, which I would be venture to say the red pill is a religious awakening for many, many people. Okay, and then I said mass immigration or terrorism. Mm. This is why they call me Coach Adamus. I was saying this before anybody saw any of these possibilities existing. This is before the Trump presidency. <laughs> All right, I was saying this is going to happen. And I was like, it's, I, oh, by the way, I said we're due time for either one of these events. We got all four. We got four out of five, at least all five. <laughs> I was like, dude, and people were like, dude, you, why are you so dark? Why are you so, I was like, dude, I said, we're due time. That was my main point. I was like, we're due time for one of these events. And this was 2019, and I could actually show you the video and prove it. All right, I did a podcast November 2019 saying, yeah, man, one of these things are going to happen. Now, the point that I want to make about her as I said, women, once the economy collapses or if there's a world war or if there's a religious awakening, women start to go back and get some. I'm like, they're going to switch it. They're going to drop feminism and say they want to be housewives. Here we are. Here we are. 
I was like, they're going to drop it, and they're going to drop that act and say they want to be housewives. What happens when World War III was a threat? They're like, I'll be in there cook, cooking and cleaning. I'm like, man, I've, it's an act. But I, by the way, feminism was a psyops. It was the biggest shit test in the world's history, meaning it had no teeth. But we fell for it. Much of how people fell for it was because people felt sorry for women. Well, they deserve it. Well, just because you deserve something don't mean you should get it. And they've been oppressed. And, and so a lot of people did it to try to fix something only to find out that they kept asking for more and more and more. And I was like, there's the, there's the shit test. Oh, we just want this. And you give it to them. Then they want more. Then they want more. Then they want more. That's where the shit test went out of hand. But I said, yep, there'll be soft girl era. They're going to say this. They're going to return to the kitchen. They want to be in their feminine. They want to be spiritual. Watch. And here we are. I just want to be a housewife. I just need a little bit of help. But she got a bull nose earring. She ain't feminine at all. You done. It's a wrap. You're not com- it's not coming back, guys. It's not coming back. We're not, we're not going to make this leap back to traditional relationships anymore. Because it's not even financially viable to do so. We, we've disenfranchised men so, many, so much by stripping their opportunities from college, forcing college to be uncomfortable for them, basically focus on less academia and more trauma and mental health and advocacy and activism, great culture, telling men that they have privilege. Men said, hell with that. We also seen the surges of the internet, internet pornography, women selling themselves on the internet. Riding a cock carousel in college, becoming unwifeable, not looking for a husband, looking for a husband that made equal and more. I was like, please. Now they want to switch it up. I don't want to work no more. Mm-hmm. By the way, um, women do this in marriages too. Women do this in marriages. You'll get with her. She'll have a degree and she'll be economically viable for you. You'll pick her and then she'll say, I, wanna, I don't want to go to college. I don't want to work no more. <laughs> the traditional days are done. They're, they're, it's not coming back. All right, so we have to find a new way. One of the new ways is of salvation is passport bros. We're going to talk about them later. Free agent lifestyle. Men are to find a way to I'll go to the I'll go to where traditionalism is instead of trying to make American women traditional. So she wants to become at probably age thirty two. I'm going to be traditional now. Too late. When people ask me what do I want to do with my life, I typically make some shit up on the spot because the real answer is I want to be a fucking housewife. I don't imagine myself working. Too late. Guys, ladies and gentlemen, too late. That's all I'm going to say, man. That's all I'm going to say. And again, this is where people say, man, you don't know what you're talking about. It's dark, and this is doom and gloom. It's too late. It ain't coming back. I'm just letting you know as Coach Radamas. I've been on the, hitting the hell on net on. I've been hitting the head on the nail so much, it ain't coming back. That's all, that's all old hat. So now what we have is sugar babies and fornication and cop carousel and dating apps and, 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 and OnlyFans and and only fan simps, that's, that's what we got. That's our new reality until. And then the more immigrants we bring on, say bye-bye to those jobs that you guys are now leaving because they're going to swoop all of that shit up. They are, they're swooping it up now. Say goodbye to your um, what, government zaddy. Like black people, say goodbye to all that shit. They done with y'all. They moving in immigrants. They're, they're the new black people. <laughs> They're the new black people. So you're not going to be able to fall back on what? Blue collar trades, uh, physical skill labor. You're not going to be able to fall back on that. Jobs at McDonald's, uh, jobs at the mall, uh, stocking positions, delivery. Dr- Ninja, you get, you're done. AI f- fixing that problem. So now that you've got yourself where you're too good to work that job, you can't fall back on that job now. Hector and Jose, they building houses. They putting shingles on roofs. They working at McDonald's. And they trying to work 40 hours and double shifts and shit like that. Okay? All right? Their aunts hiring all the other girls in the, in the immigrant uh, section. Yo. And not only that, you have in these major metropolises that are somewhat refuge cities for immigrants they are now taking over the resources. Those resources are not going to disenfranchise black men and women that have been disenfranchised and lazy asses for the last 70 years thinking that this is going to be a, a, a natural state to be able to get resources to support yourself. That's all gone. That's all given to the immigrants now. They giving them monies and dollars to the immigrants. You better figure some shit out. 
It ain't coming back either. It ain't coming back. They're like, y'all, th- these systems are like, y'all had y'all chance and you slept for 70 years. Now, y'all can fight for it, but it ain't going to go to you. It's going to them. This is New York, Illinois, uh, Georgia. Uh, it, I'm telling you, I don't care if it should go to them or not, but that's where it's going. This is where we're going. This is the future. This is the future. And I'm telling you what the future is. You better get your act up out here. All right. All right. You better get your act right, Juice. This is a woman named Amanda Seals. She's an annoying woman. All right. I'm going to tell you this right now. I don't almost agree with almost everything she says. Here we go. I just feel like I don't have energy for men who are casual about me. Yes, that is the mood. Not a sentimental one. Well, maybe it is sentimental. If you're not intrigued, if you're not intentional, if you're not pressed, what are we doing? Yeah, that's the vibe. Anything real informal and laissez-faire, I'm just, I'm not there. And anyone who's like, oh, that's, I don't care. I don't care what you think. As I have always said, a revolutionary woman will not be won passively. Oh, See, guys, <laughs> she don't realize it's you're done. You're not highly selected. Not for a guy that's come helping you out, baby. Now, you can get them guts pushed. You will get folded. I will hear you farting in the middle of the night, and I might sleep over every now and then. But you're not on the high selection list. It's, it's, Game over. You, you you missed the boat. The boat's not coming back. Boat was loaded. It's not coming back with anything. Bruh. <laughs> Game over. You can still be open for sex and practice, but you cannot pick no more. Your picker is... Game over. It's not a good picker. You don't have a good picker. And then the revolutionary... Oh, so you want to be a loud mouth too. You want to be a loud mouth. Okay. That's why you ain't going to get picked. That's why you're going to get picked for only uh, getting your guts pushed. You done. All right. Uh, we got another one here. We got another one here. These, these are things that I know people are going to fight me on. It's no fight. I don't know what you're debating. And I'll still fold and I'll move her in and I'll be with her and she can pay for my PlayStation. It's a wrap. There's too many. To, not for a guy who's been there. I've already like the men. She's 42, by the way. The 42 year old man. Them ninjas getting passports. <laughs> them ninjas going overseas. Them ninjas is going to be coming free agents. Them ninjas is coming SYSBM. They ain't got to put up with your mouth. They're like, I ain't putting up with that. And then, of course, they're gay and ashy and dusty for doing so. We're going to get to that later. Third hour. Got another one here. Ling Ling. Asian girl. Bo- boss girl. Asian boss girl. Oh, boy. Being 38 and reflecting on my perspective on romantic relationships now, I've realized that it can actually be more challenging to receive love than to give love. I'm generally a very independent person. It's really hard for me to accept, like, help. I have to force myself to open up, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, And that I found has actually been harder than just like, oh, let me show you love. Let me like Mm. do an act of kindness for you. Mm. Let me give you a hug. Let me do the things that will make you feel love. Like it's easier to do that, but then to like be on the receiving end of it and to really like let myself feel that it's like, it's not as easy as I thought it would be, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm. Do you feel like in your more recent relationships, you felt the need to open up more so than you have in your 20s? Like, you feel like that wall was always up for you? Totally. And the weird thing is, like, I didn't know how solid that wall was until I started letting it, or, like, Mm. trying to let it down. Mm -hmm. And even to this day, I'm like, I don't think it's, I think it's going to take a while for it to, like, come completely down. Being... It's going to be a while for it to come completely down. It's going to be a while for it to come completely down. 
game over. You mean like how many years? How, how many years you think it could take? Give or take. What? Five? Ten? You're 38 now. How much time do you think you got left? Mm. I mean, come on. <laughs> I'm going to come on back. This is Queen Blue Balls. She's going to be your blue ball queen. She's proved. She's smart. Westernized. Ninja said, I'm getting my passport, and I can get a version of her over in Thailand without all the bullshit. You see why a guy would go to Thailand and go there as opposed to stay here and get her? And I'm not saying she's Thai. I'm just saying. I'll just go over there. Instead of having the westernized version talking about all these walls she built up and I give and take and all of this stuff. I've been like this. I'm 38. It's going to be a while. She's going to have to wait on me. Eh, (laughs) this is wild. I don't care what they look like. This is all what men have to try to overcome. And dudes ain't putting in that work. We ain't about to wait for all that. We do have a sister right here with green eyes, hazel eyes, gray eyes, whatever they are. She's going to say, somebody asked, are you single? She says, like, really, I don't see why you are if you are. So this is a guy who only sees women as objects of uh, attraction. Uh, You're attractive, therefore you shouldn't be single. This is where men err. Just because a woman, and by the way, I told you, older attractive women, I run from them. I run. Only if she asks me for anything more than this Johnson, I'm running. And even then, sometimes I'll be looking at her sideways. So older, attractive women are also, they're they're a bigger red flag. I can't see why you're single. You're so attractive. So what? So what? (laughs) Right? That would mean she should not be single. And she's going to say exactly why she's single. And this is going to be probably one of the fewest women that have held themselves accountable for why they're single than you've ever heard anyone do. So let's go ahead and let her explain why she's single. Well, I appreciate the compliment, but I am single because, you know, my name is Diamond and old Diamond, we call her cubic zirconia. And cubic zirconia would go out. She had a boyfriend and she'd go out and suck another man's dick and come home and kiss her boyfriend in the mouth. And cubic zirconia, anyway, and cubic zirconia also one time slept with her man's best friend, forgot to wash the sheets, and um, her best her her boyfriend slept in his best best friend's net. And cubic zirconia also was just a lying, manipulative, abusive piece of shit. Which is why now I help people uh, learn how to not get manipulated and stuff because I was such a piece of emotionally abusive, disgusting, fat horseshit that. I can only repent by helping people not suffer the way I made people suffer. So, you know, but that that's why I don't have a man. <laughs> because I ran away all the good men. Woo! Whoa! Lord have mercy. And I'm going to have to give her a round of applause, did you? Because you don't hear. You don't hear a lot of women say this. She ain't lying. She told the truth. She told the truth. I was a lying manipulator. I cheated. I wasn't a victim. Okay. I have my chance. I have my chance. Okay. A lot of guys think that, no, she lying. She told the truth. You got to know when women tell her the truth. She is not lying. She tried to actually say my friend. Okay. She said, I manipulated so good, I now teach men how to not get manipulated because I was so good at it. This is a fact that not a lot of women will admit because I say a woman has met all of their potential mates by the age of 25. Now, this, this, this is in general because some women do find a man in their 30s and 40s. You do find a man, and they're like, not me, coach. There's a woman listening to me right now. Not me, coach. I found the man of my dreams when I was 42. So it's not over for you, ladies. You can find a man of your dreams when you're 42. And that's you. But I'll ask you, ma'am, that man you fought, found at 42, would you have given him a chance at 25?
That's the magic question. And that's you. That's the magic question. The man you found at 42, you wouldn't have even paid him no mind at 25. See? That means you settled for that man at 42. And that's you. We call him the that's you guy. He took the leftovers. He did you a favor. In fact, he took a deal that no other man was going to be willing to take. The reality is the guys that you had available to you when you were before 25 were the best you were going to possibly get. You settled. You probably were a two-time divorcee or at least once. You probably were a single mother. And then at 42, you found the guy, the love of your life. But he wouldn't have been in love of your life at age 25. Yeah. And that's you. Mm. And that's what we have to acknowledge. Okay, so you found a person. You wouldn't have found that person. You wouldn't have been available for him when you were, quote, unquote, in your prime. Quote, unquote, when you were living your best life. Who is this? I don't even know who that is. All right. So anyway, that is the truth, Roof. That is the truth. Anyway, I think that's the end of that segment. We are going. It, is it? No, there's not. There's more. Maybe there's more women cried on the internet. So sorry. Hey, she talking over me. Don't talk over me, Kevin Samuel style. How many more videos do I have? Goodness. Maybe I'll save these for later because there's just so many videos of uh, these these types, this archetype where they're. um you know, just complaining for men. What they're complaining for men is to accept or settle. All right, this is another one right here. Okay, so they live their best years. They go to college, get their degree, run into problems, and then all of a sudden, here we go. This may be me being ungrateful or overthinking, but I feel like I'm usually never wrong, so I'm probably right. <laughs> but, like, the guy that I'm currently dating, I feel like, and I know it's early, it's not enough. Sorry. Sorry. I'm just going to go out there and say it. I just, I'm not getting enough. Like, I want more, like more romance. Like, I want the flowers. I want the like, um, what are mm -hmm. you doing this Friday? You know, I have reservations at this place for such, such time. Like, he's just not giving me the energy that I would like. And I feel like... I don't know if it's like he's not giving me the energy or I'm too focused on only him because I'm not dating other people. Yep. See, I, I've been telling you that, you know, the, one of the weaknesses of weak people is that they use, she's in usury, right? She's in usury. Uh, the, usury comes with romance. So now it's his fault. He ain't doing enough. He ain't putting them f enough rose petals out. He, he not taking me out. He, he not spending too much time. He not, he not trying to wipe my ass with attention. Pookies are giving me attention. I'm going to go where the attention flows because he ain't doing enough. And that's the best guy for her. That's the best guy. That's the best guy that's going to give her the life that she wants. It ain't enough. Mm. And I feel like, and I feel like, and she'll destroy it. Then come back to that ninja when he 40 and she 40. We make a great power couple. You had what you had. You had the best, but you wanted the romance. The romance is not real. It's not real. These things are last for a year and a half tops. It's all facade. It's all fake. But then you'll give her everything, but then she wants, I want more romance. <laughs> Say no movie. Say no movie. Men aren't movies. Men do not put on productions for you. We don't sit around all day talking about, hmm. All right, I'm going to take a girl this way. I'm going to take a girl here. And then I'll make salmon and quinoa. And then I'll buy bottles of wine and I'll plan out uh, a candlelit dinner. I can't wait to do this on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. And then I'll take her out shopping and, and I'll buy, gift her uh, perfume and shoes. And, and, I'll, and I'll take her to a theatrical performance. And uh, then I'll stay up all night giving her the daddy strokes and eating her punani. And, and then I'll wake up the next day and do my job and, then I'll be there for uh, my company physically, emotionally, financially. Then I'll be for her. I'll pay all her rent. I'll pay all her rent. And uh, I'll pay all her bills so she don't have to worry. Then I'll pour into her. I'll pour into her. I'll pour into the children. Ninja, it's never enough. 
It's never enough. And they find their ass out here single. Looking for BET ninjas. BET ass ninjas. All right, man, look. <laughs> 